Up next on Did You Know? A visit to the newly expanded Glenstone Museum. Stay tuned. It's not often that a new world-class art museum opens, but in 2006, that's what happened here in Montgomery County, Maryland, when Mitchell Rails and Emily Way opened the Glenstone Museum in Potomac. At that time, the museum consisted of a 30,000 square foot museum building called the Gallery, with 9,000 square feet of exhibition space. It featured pieces from the Glenstone Foundation of Modern and Contemporary Art. The grounds, 100 acres, showcased a few large-scale sculptures. Visiting hours were limited and tours were scheduled via appointment. But things have changed. The Rails married in 2008 and the collection grew. On October 4, 2018, Glenstone reopened after a five-year $200 million expansion that brings its exhibition space to nearly 60,000 square feet. There were bumps along the way, including pushback over a sewer line, but the goal never changed, to make this private collection accessible to all. The space allows more exposure to the Glenstone Foundation's collection, which includes 1,300 works from more than 200 artists. I'm challenged with trying to explain to you what happened here and, and why. So you have to go back a little bit in, in history to understand why I am the way I am and why Emily and I did what we did. And, and it really goes back to my parents who were quite, quite remarkable people. In fact, my father grew up in an orphanage uh, called the Hebrew Orphan Asylum in New York. It doesn't exist anymore. It was torn down many decades ago but uh, he came up the old-fashioned hard way and learned the real knocks of, of life. My dad, who passed away around five years ago, um, was very committed to philanthropy. He left his entire estate to the education of underprivileged children in the inner city, 100%. He didn't want to die a rich man. He wanted to go to the cemetery knowing he did good. And in fact, on his tombstone at the cemetery, it says champion of the underdog, because that's who my father was. So those values were really instilled upon me. Um, uh, and I thought a lot about what we were going to do here uh, as I worked my way through light, life as, as a whole. I had some difficult moments. And uh, out of one of those moments was born the idea that I love art. I love architecture, I love nature, and I want to do something profoundly different than what's ever been done before. Um, so the goal was, and continues to be, to collect seminal works of art since World War II, uh, made by the most innovative artists who have directly impacted art history and together offer a very global perspective of the most important developments of art of our time. Now. Um, we prefer to focus on the most challenging works of art because it's the challenging works of art that stay with you and that influence generations of other artists to be risk takers and to innovate. Um, so with that in mind, starting with World War II, our plan is to continue collecting through the end of our lifetimes and our successors will then begin be able to collect artists that had entered the collection during our lifetimes through the end of those artists' lives. The collection rivals Washington, D.C.'s most famous art museums and includes renowned artists such as Ruth Asawa, Louise Bourgeois, Marcel Duchamp, Michael Heiser, Ronnie Horn, Barbara Kruger, Jackson Pollock, Charles Ray, Mark Rothko, Richard Serra, Tony Smith, and Andy Warhol. Some of the works are commissions for the museum. The Rails also actively support emerging artists and have an active loan program. In addition to the original gallery, there is a new museum building called the Pavilions, as well as a reconfigured public entrance and parking area, an arrival hall, two cafes, and an environmental center, which will open later in 2019. 
The minimalist buildings seamlessly blend with the landscape, which now totals more than 230 acres. So Glenstone really focuses on integrating art, architecture, and landscape. And then we present it in such an unhurried and quiet way that people can sort of create their own experience. Um, and so it's those unique moments. Uh, I like to say we're really about the pull, not the push. What I mean by that is a lot of places you go to, you feel like you're being pushed along, either by the place itself and how they set it up or by the other crowds of people behind you. Here at Glenstone, it's more about your intrigue, like what's next. Uh, even the landscape offers that up a lot. Uh, we jokingly call our landscape architects land shapers, not landscapers, because as you make your way towards the building, it's sort of another surprise. It's, nothing's revealed right away. No visit is the same. The museum rotates selections through changing exhibitions and single artist installations. And with the time of day and changing seasons, both the outdoor and indoor exhibits take on different characteristics. So as much as nature is the landscape, it's the topography, it's the trees, it's the grass, nature is really light. It's that changing light, and today is my favorite light. It's, it's cloudy, it's bright, it's even, it's, it moves in and out, it has that that way of changing the atmosphere of a space. But also, as we began to sculpt this passage here, as we began to sculpt these rooms for these works, we, we wanted this, this experience to be about a journey through light and through shadow. Truly, Glenstone is a place for quiet contemplation, away from the hustle and bustle of everyday life. The zen-like landscape includes pathways, trails, streams, meadows, and forests. Then there's the environmental stewardship piece. Great care was taken to plant native trees and plants, as well as manage rainfall, recycle water, and support wildlife habitat. Rather than think about one museum or one piece of sculpture, was to think about the whole site. And together we worked with Mitch and with Emily uh, with Charles Guathme, with Tom, a bunch of artists and multiple consultants really to think of how you can make an experience holistic from the time that you leave or, or, or arrive in the region to when you get to uh, this site. What's really amazing is that it is a full experience. I mean, it is the integration of landscaping, architecture, as well as then uh, the particular pieces. Um, a lot of care really has been taken with each artist to incorporate exactly the conditions um, that the artists, you know, um, require to have really fidelity with how it's exhibited. Sustainability is also part of this holistic experience. Once it opens, the Environmental Center, a multi-use maintenance and education facility, will offer experiential learning. Visitors will learn about Glenstone's efforts in composting, waste reduction, materials recycling, and water conservation, and how to take these practices home. Conversations are encouraged throughout Glenstone. Attendants, called Glenstone Guides, do more than simply guard the art. They also dive deep into the collection and encourage visitors' input. Many are art students, art historians, or artists themselves. Some participate in Glenstone's Emerging Professionals program. All told, the staff totals 140 associates. What I love about being a guide here is that Glenstone is a place where art comes to life and you get to hear how um, the people we're surrounded by daily think and feel about these beautiful pieces and um, I have learned so much from my peers but also from people from the community who come and bring their own experiences and it is such a unique experience to be able to share and hear so many different perspectives about masterpieces. Community outreach is a priority at Glenstone as well. Our outreach here it takes on a couple of uh, different aspects. Uh, one of them is academic outreach, where we work with school groups from middle and high schools in Montgomery County through MCPS and also in the surrounding counties and cities. And we also do uh, a lot of uh, outreach just into our community uh, with community groups who, who use Glenstone as a resource uh, for their organization.
There's a strong partnership with MCPS, and so our students are taking advantage of this amazing opportunity uh, to learn more about art, to have uh, that very, you know, high quality experience as well. So all in all, I think that we should just be super proud that um, Montgomery County is home to this asset. This will be our gift to the world. We're not at the end, we're not at the beginning, but we're kind of at this stage of the game about uh, midway through the pack. We will always be open for all for free. We'll never charge admission. This is something that we are very committed to and we hope that it will expand audiences uh, for art. Visits can be scheduled online. Tickets are available in three month increments and released on the first day of every month. Space permitting, same day visits can be scheduled using the website or a smartphone and, space permitting, Glenstone accepts walk-ups beginning at noon each day. There are no barriers around the indoor art, so children must be 12 and older to enter. Photography is not permitted inside the museum, but welcomed out of doors. Self-guided tours are available for the outdoor sculptures. The Glenstone Museum is located at 12100 Glen Road in Potomac, Maryland. It's open Thursdays through Sundays, 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. The cafes serve seasonal fare from local sources and only accepts credit cards. Otherwise, admission and parking for the museum is free. Public transportation is available from the Rockville Metro Station via the ride-on bus. However you get there, the Glenstone Museum is worth the trip. Modern art, structural design, the natural environment, they all come together to create a truly one-of-a-kind experience right here in Montgomery County.